Seems like I've been listening to Hindi music all day. <laughs> oh, those were um, mummers walking down this. Those uh, people that were walking down the steps, though, those were um, Morris dancers. I recognize Morris dancers anywhere. Cause I, I actually have a well, he never long he no longer speaks to me, but I had a friend who was a Morris dancer. He, the only time he ever speaks to me is during my birthday, and he always wishes me a happy birthday, which I appreciate. But I wish that I could uh, still be friends with him. Of course, you can't hear anything I hear, but this is actually a really pretty song. <laughs> Very calming. Is that Italy? I can't... <laughs> is it actually the beginning of it? They start in English. It kind of reminded me of um, Bride and Prejudice. Because you really don't hear that very much in Bollywood. It's usually uh, they sing in their native tongue. So I'm wondering if this that's probably not Italy because I saw more as dancers but I can't figure out that, that yeah there's the English again <laughs> oh yeah Lagan did the same thing too I almost forgot about Lagan with Elizabeth's scene. <laughs> Her voice is so pretty. Of desire. Drop this. <laughs> ah. This is kind of reminding me of Greek, uh, Greek dancing a little bit. A little bit of tango too. Hmm. Because when they do the horror or the circle dances, they they hold on to a handkerchief to keep their balance. It's something I've always wanted to do. Oh, there's a nice carousel. Yeah, great carousel right there. I don't know what it is about carousel shots, but oh, but it's just absolutely beautiful. That's a wide pan right there. That's a overhead. See, I know this because I've I've never done it myself. But I know what the shots are called because I want to do this so bad. <laughs> so it's it's more like a, a reverie. Rebel, thank you for that. That was absolutely tremendous. And of course, of course I've watched things from Eros before, and they, they make some really outstanding uh, films. That guy looked a lot like Salman Khan, although I know it wasn't Salman Khan. Maybe it was, but thank you. I, I love that. And when I was going to see Dad today at the hospital, I was listening to The Best of Shahrukh Khan. And uh, it just... I don't know what it was, but it was just like medicine for my soul at that very moment, and it was exactly what I needed. Um, this is kind of an update. Anyway, um, Dad's still in the hospital, and they put him on a BiPAP. They they upgraded him to CCU. Uh, he's making more sense, and he actually said, you know, don't worry about me. I've made all of this, the decisions that I have to make. Just You can go home. And you can, oh, it's 222. 
Ooh. <laughs> I'm sorry that that, wow, I just, I looked at my clock and I noticed 222. I thought, mm, yeah, that makes sense. A lot of things are happening. That's, this is, there are gateways opening everywhere. I, I'm very aware of a lot of things that are happening. It's just the awareness is off the scale. It's at 11. Um, but, uh, I'm very grateful that these things are happening. I just, I realize that even though I might feel lost, it's actually very liberating. And uh, there will come a time when I know <laughs> exactly what I'm supposed to do. Right now, I just, I'm at such a state that I just, I have no clue. He's in good hands, and I know that, and I know that they're taking exemplary care of him and I'm just I'm um oddly enough I'm just the calmest I have ever been I I had a blow up at work but at work I was stressed and uh they were getting on me for different things and I don't I don't want to put up with that right now I mean I know that they have a big deal coming up fairly soon and they're already starting out with their mandatory overtime well they can take the mandatory overtime and stuff it because you know I don't have time for that it's what's more important is my dad because my dad is everything at this point in time um basically that's all I have to say and I got a lot of things I'm working on I'm I'm working on dichotomy uh there's only one instance that happens that's perilous for my characters and the rest of it is more about discovery it's, it's self-explanatory it's a transition for all the characters involved and then actually i'm coming up with another bali script i was surprised i thought huh i didn't know that, that it was in me I, I guess that i got more more to come but uh the character my main character is actually her i want her to be played by by lily singh and i want her father to be played by kunal nyar because i just think that he would be perfect i'm not sure who i play i probably have uh somebody famous play the mother but I, I want uh i'm gonna have uh shirt khan and salma khan in it and um not sure where I but because she at the beginning when she's growing up in poverty to kind of escape all that just the stigma and everything she imitates these uh rising stars and she actually gets a chance to to meet them in person but she realizes that you know, for her, that's not enough. She wants to be a comedian, and she she wants to go and make something of herself. And she uh, she gets the opportunity to actually star in America's Got Talent, and you know she gets a passport and all that. And Simon Cowell, and actually, yeah, I'm gonna throw Simon Cowell in there. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> Simon Cowell is gonna be in this thing. Uh, I'm gonna have who else am I gonna have other than Simon Cowell? I don't know. I haven't really made. I haven't really gone that far yet. But it's a woman of a thousand faces, and the whole idea. It was inspired by by Lily Singh, and God, I love her. She she's one of my inspirations right now, and I'm hoping I get a chance to actually meet her. Senpai actually noticed me. I was really, <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy about that. And the other one I'm working on is called The Dove and the Crow, and uh, it's it's actually a love story because. Uh, <laughs> he this, uh, I'll read this synopsis really, really fast Ling Bok, a peaceful Tai Chi master and teacher beloved of all who meet, who loved of all who meet him is confronted by an angry young woman Mei Fong who trusts in no one due to her sordid past it appears she has a, same, a painful secret that's slowly destroying her through his patience and unconditional love he unveils her dark past and starts and love starts to take root But um, I actually put a quote from Fan on there. Stop living someone else's life. Start living. Start by living your own. Because I thought that was so true of, of her. Because she just is numb to everything in, uh, until Ling actually opens her up to receiving his affection. Because he this love at first sight when they meet. And she becomes more free-flowing and accepting and... Um, giving as well as receptive and it's like i said it's another transition but uh 
they're coming along really nicely, and that's basically all I have to say for now. Rebel, thanks for the video. I absolutely loved it. Thank you. God bless you. Live long and prosper. Ciao, Tootsie.